We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco. On Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Hi, guys. I'm Sam Fricker. I'm an Australian Olympic diver, and you're listening to Power 98.5. Empowering listeners from the US to the UK. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. It is a beautiful, beautiful day. And I mean beautiful. That sun is out. It is bright. The weather is good. It's May 14th. Happy Mother's Day to everyone here and all around the world. I am Stephen Cuoco, and you are listening to Live On Air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio, your number one premier destination for all things news, music, sports, entertainment, talk, and only the important stuff. Whether you're listening to us on the iOS or Android app, Alexa, Siri, uh, where else? <clears throat> yes. Amazon Music. Power 98.5 Satellite Radio is available. Remember, Power 98.5 is free whether you're on the iOS or Android app. Uh, it is free on your Alexa. You can ask Siri to pull up Power 98.5. If you happen to have an Apple Music subscription, you can go ahead and No, get Power 98.5 on that. Listen to it at your leisure. Uh, We are primarily a commercial-free station. You rarely will ever hear any commercials unless there's something coming up, or I would like to call them announcements with UFC, movie premiere, whatever it may be. We've got a lot to talk about today. I've got my good friend, Jacob Hacker. You know him best from Netflix to Circle. He's a well-established actor. He's a firefighter and paramedic. He is my guest host for today, and he's going to be my guest host from time to time, providing his schedule. Uh, A lot of great things coming up. Uh, We can even talk about and go into the Australian calendar. He is the first one. The first American to be in this uh, all-inclusive calendar uh, to to do great things in the world. And we're going to find out more about that from Jacob. Today, we are going to dive into the exciting world of casting. It is something that is most talked about. Questions that, you know, people are always wanting to know. Jacob is experienced. He's gone through the casting process. I've gone through it. As you all know, I've been in the industry for over 30 years. I am diligently wanting to get in scripted, unscripted television, film. It's something I haven't done for quite some time. Um, I get opportunities to be on TV quite often to share my advice as a publicist, as someone who's uh, in the industry who understands social media and marketing and uh, uh, bankable branding and many other things. And Uh, offering insights, uh, whether it be on CBS, Fox, I've uh, shared on CNN, so on and so forth. I had no problems with allergies at all. I think it's the coffee. Have you guys noticed that? Sometimes it's when I drink coffee, I'm good. And then other times I'm wondering if my body is telling me, hey, it's time to stop drinking coffee. And I have. I've gone directly to tea. I have been feeling so much better. I have come to realize that coffee every day or often cannot do it. Cannot do it. It's been drying out my skin. My skin, it's been kicking in allergies. Uh, Coffee can do that. Caffeine can do that. Alcohol can do that. Certain foods can. I'm not allergic to it. It's just certain things and, uh, you know, everything's a chemical. Everything in the world that we consume, inhale is a chemical. 
and we just have to understand what our body's response is. Today, I happen to go almost a month without coffee. I would say within the last month, I've had coffee five times. And I used to be a heavy, heavy Starbucks drinker uh, at home and going to Starbucks. Um, I, it's not the caffeine. It does nothing for me. I just enjoy the taste of coffee. And I like that bitter taste. I even enjoy coffee ice cream. <laughs> Have you guys had that? I haven't had that in probably a couple decades. And I'm being serious. That was my mom's favorite ice cream. I hated it as a kid. I enjoy it from time to time. And I like those little ice chips that are in ice cream. Just to taste and a feel the texture of ice chips in my ice cream. Uh, I We have nothing else on the agenda because we're going to go right to it. Uh, once again, we're going to dive into the exciting world of casting. Whether you're a seasoned actor or just starting out, landing a role through casting can be both exhilarating and challenging. And those who are in the industry know this. And also, if you want to become a multimillionaire and financially successful, the entertainment industry is not that industry. You have to be passionate about being creative and artistic and expressive. Uh, if you become financially successful down the road, great. Whether you want to be a radio host, a television host, actor, whatever it may be, uh, this is not the career to think that you're going to try to pull a Napoleon Hill, think and grow rich, and become a multimillionaire or a Beyonce overnight. Yes, success can happen overnight, but not in a way that you think it does. And if you do become successful overnight, either it's by the grace of God, and I'm not being sarcastic, I'm being serious, the grace of God, or there was some shady prostitution going on behind the scenes. Something was happening because nothing in life is for free. Everything has got a real estate value to it. Uh, we're going to be discussing the top, Five tips for actors looking to make an impression on casting directors, and we'll cover everything from nailing your audition to building relationships in the industry, which is key, 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 key to unlocking your greatest success. Also, this is a career. Uh, if you want to be an actor, a musician, whatever it is, you've got to treat it as a business, not a hobby. It, it is fine if you want to have it as a hobby. It's fine if it's something that's that's on your bucket list or you're passionate about. You want to make money. You want to be successful. You want to be taken seriously. You want to get those IMDB credits. You have to treat this as a business, uh, hands down, just like real estate. You don't do real estate part-time. You either do it full-time, you don't do it at all. Same thing with acting. You're either in it and uh, you, you're getting your education Keep in mind, people who are in, uh, who are actors, they've gone to Juilliard, they've gone, they've got college credentials, they've gone to acting school. Now, I'm not saying you have to have it. There are, is no rule, but just know that if you're going to go into the world of acting with no education, no credentials, no, no branding to back you up coming from Juilliard or, or NYU or whatever it may be that someone is looking for, you better be gifted and have a lot of sparkle to you. And it's all about personality. But remember, you've got to treat it as a business. You can be passionate and love it, but it's also got to be a business. Exercise, get your training in, find out as much information, network, blog, Try to be on radio shows or, or television shows, share advice, all of these different things. You want to be an asset to the public to share. That's why Jacob's here. Uh, Jacob, <laughs> you're all experienced in this area. I guarantee you, you understand what I'm talking about. Oh, 100%. I mean, the biggest thing that has been my saving grace is one of those key points you hit on right there was your ability to make connections, connect with others. As soon as you said that, I'm like, oh, that right there, that that's the biggest, that's the biggest point. 
And you know this all too well, not only from what we're doing behind the scenes and getting you hooked up in all the right way, because you are talented. You've got a great reel. Uh, but we're going to go back to, you know, this is where I want to start. We're going to get into some of the tips. I'm just going to get right to it. All right. Absolutely. So we're, we're going to be focusing on five. I want to correlate this out with you. And where do I have it? I know I have it somewhere here. All right. I, we've got a couple P's in it. All right. All right. So we're going to be covering how to be prepared, being professional, showing confidence, bringing your personality, and then being flexible. When we think about, and I know you can only share so much or whatever you can, Netflix, casting, the circle, or even if we don't look at the area of Netflix, the fact of it is, is you've been through the casting process. What was that like for you? What did you learn from that? And what can you offer of advice? Because it's something you can never be prepared for, whether you plan it or not. You never know when you're going to get a call back. You never know what is going to happen once you submit. You're absolutely right. Now, you mentioned the circle, which is funny because I did apply for the circle and got denied for it. And then all of a sudden, here comes the mole and started doing the casting process for that. And lo and behold, it just kind of kind of happened. Now, when it comes to preparation, oh my goodness, it's the scariest part probably about casting because you can do 100 auditions and get denied for all 100. And then finally that 101st, all of a sudden you throw an audition together and then boom, you get that. And you're like, oh my goodness, I was not expecting that, nor was I ready for that. And so you constantly have to have your acting skills and your people skills 100% prepared. But when it comes to the actual casting itself, it's all a surprise. There's really there's almost no way to be prepared to get the acceptance. Does that make sense? It does. And that's why I brought up, <clears throat> darn it. <clears throat> I don't know if you can hear it, but it's like, <laughs> I'm not drinking coffee ever <laughs> again before doing an interview. Um, that's why I brought it's up. Me with dairy. <laughs> <laughs> that is why, well, at least, uh, well, I'm not going to be doing dairy or I'll be farting. Um, and we don't, <laughs> no one wants to hear that. Uh, we want to keep a good impression. Um, I don't want any memes created of my photos being taken and people putting fart stuff on me. <laughs> um, that's why I brought up the difference or, and brought up about this, you know, the circle. And then, you know, you were on the mole, but there's a big difference because it, even if it is a show on a network, everything of what they're looking for for each show and the character or the idea of what they're looking for because they're fitting you into the script. They're figuring out who you are, what you're about, and how is that going to translate to viewers, listeners, fans, and most importantly, what is not talked about. And I don't recall, and I'm saying this with all due respect, there's a lot of great casting directors out there, and I've gone through the process myself. But I'm going to give you the PR part that's left out people are picked also i can't i'm not saying this for every casting director but shows and scripts are planned and processed and produced and how you are picked for a show or a particular project is also dependent on who the advertisers and investors and sponsors are that is not shared but it is. People plan on, okay, if we've got Pepsi, we've got M&M, we've got Target, we've got um, Walt Disney World, whatever it may be, a company, you are assessed by, and if it's not by the casting director, it could also be by the director or producer. There's different areas here. But how is that going to translate to their advertisers and what can come from it? So once again, I'm dropping a gem here, and I don't know if you ever knew that, Jacob, but yes, everything in this world, especially in our industry, and when we think about media, it is always planned as to how are the advertisers and how are the 
um, sponsors going to respond and react to the potential of what they're investing in in that hour, in that show, in that project. Mm, absolutely. It's like, oh, so I don't mean to interrupt you. Uh, I just got a notification that on live people can't hear me. Oh, really? Hold on. Yeah. Are they hearing me? Yes. All right. That is odd. But I'm glad you brought that up. Hold on for a moment. We're going to try something here. All right, everyone. A big quick pause. And do you know, who, um, are they still listening? Yes. All right. And they still can't hear you? Correct. We're going to try this. Hold on for a moment. Mother. Oh boy. Here we go. <laughs> they have to be but hearing. No. They have to be hearing you now. Yep. They said, I just got the message. They said, we hear you loud and clear. All right. So here's the thing. Thank you. You know what? I've got to check my messages. I am so glad that happened. And this is why I love, really love uh, people who are listening in because they, they're getting it. Christina, what do we have? Nothing. Okay, good. Everybody else, we're good. All right. So good news. Here's the positive. Thank you to those who let Jacob know that you weren't able to hear us because now I've got to go back to my tech team and find out what is happening here and what do I need to do when it comes to a call in because we've had to make some changes going on and, and what's been happening. So uh, my team is like, try this new plugin. We're using this now. And I'm like, stop changing things. We need to keep things <laughs> like when something works, why do we need to change it? <laughs> that old mentality, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so to go back and, um, let me, did we get, we got good feedback on that? Good. All right. So everybody heard what we're talking about. They got the gist of, of um, what I was sharing earlier and you didn't go too far too deep, but we're going to play a little bit catch up. So we're covering now, you know, this is a business. You did share that you did cast for the circle. You didn't get it. You were approved and did get in for the mole. What did you learn about yourself when you think about the casting project or uh, process? What did you happen to learn? Because you can never truly be prepared for what they're doing and what they're looking for. That, correct. I mean, the only thing that you can really prepare for when it comes to casting and auditions is pretty much your faith in yourself and your skills. You know, you could do the best audition of your life. And if it's not what the corporation, the business or the image that they're looking for, it doesn't matter. They just they don't care. They're like, thank you, but no, thank you. And as long as you're prepared with yourself, your skills, that's about as far as you can get with preparation for any audition, because you never know. Like I could get an audition sent to me today and say, hey, I need this in an hour. I'm like, ah, damn. OK. Or, hey, we want you to audition for this TV show. And what I've learned is the larger the production, most of the time, the larger the production, the more vigorous and intense the process is to actually get cast. And buckle your seatbelts because it's a long, stressful ride, even in casting. Mm. So we've got to go to the other bullet point. And I'm not going to be going down acting like I'm a professor here. I just uh, cr created some notes because it is a question I get asked often. And I know some, so they, they say research a role, make sure that your headshot and resumes are up to date and all of that. The main thing, and this is what I experienced when I cast for Survivor, Big Brother, which I've been doing since 2010. I hope one of these days that I get on that show. Um, I did do the mole. Uh, what else? I didn't do the circle. Uh, I cast for, uh, I think Amazing Race was another one I did. I did 19 last year. I did eight this year. 
And a year before that, I believe I did 21. And someone just said to me two days ago, and it was really, really kind and uh, inspiring that this one particular person cast for Big Brother and it took them, I think it was 19 times before she finally got on to the show. 19 times. Wow. For you, how often have you been submitting? Oh, goodness. I submit all the time. I mean, I usually probably do five to ten auditions a week, and that's probably an average. Some weeks less, some weeks more. Now, are you doing Zoom calls? Are you taking on, you know, these projects and having your IMDB info set in, your resume sent in, a pre-recorded video, or are you going in and you're being recorded and auditioning right there on the spot in real time? I usually do it all online. So I am represented with agencies and they'll send it out on through email and I, I'll send them everything all at once. And what's really nice is, you know, I have all of my reels, my credentials, my resume on my IMDb. Also, I've got it all on files that I can send over right away. Um, I have the option to go to location, but someone like me, you know, I'm trying to be an actor and a model who lives in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so <laughs> a lot of times, most of what I do is just online. Yeah. I, and go ahead, go ahead, please. Yeah, I was just going to say, and then usually if the next step is taken with me, then that's when you do like the Zoom and you can even do like actual meetings of that nature. And it's, uh, Sherry is asking a question and I appreciate this question, Sherry. You know, I, we offered, you know, when I put in there top five tips, the top five tips, and so you know, Sherry, is being prepared. I'm going to just say that, you can only be prepared by knowing and having the information to the facts that you're aware of. Your height, your weight, your ethnicity, your background, you know, being prepared, you know, showing up, making sure you're on time. If you're doing a Zoom uh, interview or a Zoom cast, I always show up five minutes early. Uh, if it's... Uh, if I have to sit in the waiting room or if they're using Microsoft Teams, whatever it is it may be, be there early. I always say being on time is being late. But being prepared is having all of the information available and ready and submitted before you even get to that test shoot, before you even get to that interview. Make sure you have it. Also, at the same time, it is asked, uh, you know, people are, are cast, and I don't know if what you can share or whether you did it on your laptop or computer or phone, but make sure you're in uh, a place because they're going to be recording you and they have to put these pre-recorded um, areas of, of questioning and segments, uh, putting it together to create some sort of what I call a promo reel or a reel for whoever their hand, the network, the producer, the director, they're, they're putting together a larger script and that's why you're there. So I recommend, you know, having a good background. Um, if you're going to be in front or recording in front of your bathroom, don't have the bathroom door open, you know, making sure your ring light or that light is right there in front of your face, but not, overly processing by making you look like powder. <laughs> I don't remember if you saw that movie powder, <laughs> like a white guy. So with sharing all of these tips, did you follow this in the same way, Jake, or how did you do your audition? Did you do it by laptop? Did you do it by phone? Did you make sure that you were prepared and you had a really good background, not having a bathroom door open, not having, or being in a, a messy environment, just having it be, looking almost like uh, a real housewives or, you know, when they're doing those takes on reality television where they're asking you questions. I had the word right there in my mind, um, but you understand where I'm going with it. 
Yeah, absolutely. So that is probably one of the most stressful aspects of doing auditions when you're first starting out, trying to find the right spot to do your auditions and the right lighting and sound without echoes. A lot of people can go outside, but if you are outside, yeah, the lighting is great, but then you have vehicles, people, animals, you know, all sorts of distractions. So what I did is I, once I started getting more into the audition life as an actor, I designed and created a studio in my house. I have one room dedicated strictly to office and studio. And this also ties back into what you said about not making a lot of money, especially when you start out the jobs, just, you know, very few come along that give great financial stability. So you got to do with what you got and make your investments in the proper places. And one of the best investments when you're starting out is good lighting, a way to soundproof and some type of great painting on the wall or backdrop, like one solid color. And so that is what I did. I've got large lights. I've got a strict, like a light blue gray wall that I film in front of and I soundproofed the room. Now, we're very fortunate this day and age right now because our cell phones have some of the best camera and audio quality. So I did. I do most of mine on my cell phone. I do have a laptop that's capable of it, and I do have microphones, but nine times out of ten, I can just use my phone and do everything in my studio. So that is nine times out of ten what I do, unless they ask for something specific, like we want to see you stomping through the woods, or we want to see you driving a car, or pouring a drink at a bar. So... Those are the specific ones where you got to get a little creative, but most of the time you can just do it in front of a plain background. Yeah. And just to let you guys know, um, uh, I'm having to use, we've got Jacob Hacker here. He's a professional actor, reality TV star. Uh, I, we're going to be having, and we do have good connection from time to time. I'm using a plugin that I normally use, but my team out in Manchester, UK is uh, using and having us use a different plugin. So let me know or let us know. We shouldn't have any connection issues, but right now I'm having to use an older plugin uh, to bring this to you live until I get things sorted out later today um, as to what's going on for when we're doing live phone interviews uh, with the new plugin that they have for us. So my team's paying attention to the connection. Just be mindful that once in a while the connection may drop, but my team will bring it back up. Uh, no worries. Uh, Connie is asking, when using a cell phone, what position do you use that in? I'm going to honestly say from what I know of is casting uh, directors or producers, they want wide angle. Have you been filming in wide angle on your phone? 100%. You have to film video in wide angle, so your phone will be horizontal. If you're taking photos, usually they want full body or they'll be very specific. We want waist up or we want chest up. And in those, you do vertical. Photos vertical, video horizontal. Uh, I'm going to honestly say that that would, so five pillars of casting, be prepared, be professional, show confidence, bring your personality and be flexible. Uh, it's known. And I did write this part down just to share is I'm going to get to it in a moment. Today is a fun day, Jacob. You know what I've learned every time I try to prepare, <laughs> <laughs> it does we just not about work. That too? <laughs> yeah, you know what? We were being prepared. I'm going to honestly say you want to be prepared as much as possible. But when you're relying on technology, that doesn't fucking work. It just, <laughs> it just, uh, I had to drop the F bomb. Forgive me. I don't know if your parents are, li are your parents listening. Uh, they swear just as much as I do. So oh, I think okay. she's, probably, she's probably going, yeah, say it again, Steven, you know. <laughs> All right, good. So we've got, uh, where are we here? All right, being flexible. Directors and casting agents are often looking for actors who are versatile and can adapt to different roles. Show them that you can be flexible and take on variety of characters and styles. What I'm going to do is to blow the whistle on is just be yourself. I can tell you from, from being in this industry long enough, 
do not put on air. Do not give an idea of what you think they want from you. Just be yourself. You cannot, if there's going to be any manufacturing of a person or personality, they're going to figure that out on your own. If you're trying to manufacture, here's the biggest golden rule. And I, I hope people are, are enjoying this and, and getting the information. This isn't, you know, a, a think and grow rich type of thing and, you know, sitting down and going through every little five pillars. I want to be able to give you all the information without having to number them. But the, the top of the line and the most crucial is you can never be prepared enough because they casting has an idea and they know what they're looking for. They're keeping it slightly open-ended to figure out who you are and do you fit for television? Do you fit for whatever project that they're working on? And once again, do you fit to what their sponsors and advertisers are looking for when it comes to the project and whatever network that it's on? Uh, you know, smiling and confidence and being bubbly and all of that works and they encourage it. But I also have to say, I'm calling a little bit of BS on that because you can smile and be bubbly. But then the question is, is how much, what are you getting from the personality? Like, is it a, a, you know, when I did the magic mic audition, they wanted me to create, Jacob, a uh, video of me dancing. And I had to put my cell phone way back and get a full body of, of the dancing. It, it was a fun experience. Uh, but at the same time, you know, there are certain things that, you know, uh, when I was in my audition for that Magic Mike role uh, that they wanted, and I was naturally bubbly and smiley because that's my personality. And I was honest and straightforward. Uh, but sometimes, you know, you never know what questions they're going to have. And the questions that they do come with can change in a moment. And it may not even be a question that they're prepared for because they saw something in you. They heard something from your answer. And here's, here's the whole point. One of the questions uh, that I was asked in one of my casting is uh, it had to do with partying and alcohol. And uh, the casting agent asked me, do I need alcohol in order to loosen up and have fun or to be the life of the party? And I said, absolutely not. I said, I honestly prefer not to drink if I don't need to or have to because I'm very observant and I like to be aware of my surroundings. And if and when I know that there are other people that are going to be letting loose and, and, and partying like a rock star, I don't want to necessarily fall into the crowd because I feel that someone needs to be responsible because I know, especially in this industry and outside of this industry and even at private parties and, and red carpets, someone has to be a leader. Someone should be and needs to be prepared in case, you know, someone needs help because guarantee 9.9% .9 out of 10 Someone's going to become incapacitated. Someone could accidentally uh, do a little bit more than they should. And the, the other thing, and I'm going to say it, you never know if someone's going to get purposely drugged. I always believe, especially when you're with friends or, in, or with ever it may be, someone needs to be coherent and competent and aware of all surroundings no matter where you are the whole point of sharing that is i know that there was something in the question i know for a fact that that question wasn't prepared the person i don't believe was just going to ask oh do you need alcohol to have fun to let loose i know for a fact um, from the way it was asked and in a body language it was something that came from one of my answers and it was something that they thought about to ask. And that's why I say you can be prepared, but the questions that they have planned are not set in stone. Absolutely not. And that's the, a wonderful, a wonderful aspect to discuss too, because like I'm sure a lot of actors would agree with me 
you know, when you do your audition, you get a small description of how they want the character portrayed. And so that's all you have to go off of. Now, along the lines of, you know, you saying, be yourself, don't put on the fake act because they will notice it. 100% agree with you there. And then once you do your audition, if they like you, if they see something in you, if they see potential, then they will tell you, we like what you have, we like what you're doing, but can you try it this way or give us a little bit more of this? So once they get a feel for you, who you are personally, who you are as a person and an actor, then they will direct you and if they want, tweak it, see how you do with that. And then comes a little bit more of the acting. It, it's a process. Mm. I like, no, seriously. Uh, how confident you were in expressing that. I like the ownership. And that is a key right there. Own your own identity by knowing who you are before you try to manufacture it. Don't ask me to repeat that. It just flowed. <laughs> <laughs> and it flowed so nicely. Thank you. Uh, it goes back to what I just posted. I want to bring it up. Uh, this is something I shared on Instagram. It's a conversation I recently had on my show with um, with Jake Jensen, Any Actors and Athletes Studio. I'm looking for it here. This is what's important. <laughs> Here's a tip for you. Isn't he awesome? Yeah, that guy's great. (laughs) To truly understand the impact of a decision on your life, shift the focus from what good an opportunity would do for you to what the opportunity would do to you. There's a difference when we think about opportunities, no matter what you're doing in the world of film and television and what you're going after when we think about success and to meet the goals and desires that you have. There are times where you may decide, oh my God, I want this part. Oh my God, I need this part. You're going to dress up, show up, smile, and have all the confidence in everything in the world. I suggest to go into it with the mindset and the question and to also, here's another great tip (laughs) that I don't know if casting directors would tell you. Cast them. When you're in the audition, interview them because that's what I do. I have questions prepared. I will not go into an audition and just sit there in subservitude and just be peeled back away back away as an onion. I want to know who was interviewing me. Find ways to get your your casting director open up. I hope that doesn't go against you. I'm not saying go in there and act like a uh, a therapist, but I would say what I would expect is I would want to show that I'm interested in a project. I would suggest that I would like to know what does the casting director see about me. Now they may only be able to see so much. They cannot have you believing. Here's another tip. Casting directors cannot have you believe in you've got the role. They cannot be subjectively sharing with you too many viewpoints or thoughts because if they share something and give you the idea or impression that you're going to get it or that you have it, that could be problematic because there are people who will go out of their way, who will find a producer, find a director, maybe even find a production company and try to get some answers as to, in their mind, they believed from their perception of that interview that they've got it or something that the casting producers had said, but really that's not what it was. But I like to find out to the best of my ability and making sure that our time is not wasted. Give me some sort of idea. I'm not asking for hope. I'm asking for give me some sort of idea so that I, so when we're done, what do I have to look forward to? Not expect. What do I have to look forward to in this? And whatever they can share with you, because once again, they cannot lead you to believe that you have it. They have to be very objective and neutral because you're not the only person they're interviewing. And there are times with casting, and I don't know if you've experienced this yet, Jacob. There are times to where people will cast, 
But then someone will come in and the part will already be filled by an A-lister. And that happens as well. Or someone will come in who was more successful on a show, uh, obtain great sponsorships or endorsements, or did something really incredible for the ratings. And the production company, if you think production companies don't have rule of say, they do. Because they're the ones pitching it or they're the ones doing it. Somebody or they already go ahead. I was just gonna say, or they already have the person they want for the role, but they have to go through the motions of doing the casting and the interviews and things of that nature. Sometimes that happens. And but the, here's the thing, they can't say that though. Correct. I'm glad you brought it up because I was leading to it, but I also, you know, once again, I'm I'm not gonna BS or airbrush something. These are the facts. And these are the, I want to go ahead and give people the facts of what's not talked about because no one deserves to have their time wasted. I was recently in a, another situation most recently. And here's the point. I was thinking and convinced myself by knowing how exceptionally awesome this opportunity would have been for me that I had myself so convinced on this, of this checklist that I didn't realize, nor did I want to, Jacob. I didn't want to figure out what would it do to me as a person, personally, professionally, and otherwise. I was led to believe that I had this opportunity. It was mine. Everyone I spoke to about it, you got it, Stephen, you got it, Stephen, but something in my heart was telling me that what it would do to me was not going to be good. But I kept with the fantasy. I kept with the idea of what I thought and other people thought of what it would do for me and my career was going to be awesome. But deep down inside, I knew it would take me away from myself. It would take me away from my PR firm, from my radio show, the radio station, and it would require me for seven weeks, if not two months. It would have done what it would do to me is removed me from my own personal professional passions and responsibilities and put me in subservitude to somebody else. And it was not going to be good. So by the grace of God and everything else, Something must have stepped in and changed the scenario of how good it would have done for me and gave me that lesson and that experience and that eye-opening opening and awakening, Jacob, of what it would do to me. And it was hard because I convinced myself and I talked myself into how it could better and change my life. And that's the biggest thing and the number one thing of all things when we look at casting is be very careful of how you mindfuck yourself and how you convince yourself and how you fantasize to the point to where you will avoid the lies and the stories and the warning signs to believe that what it would do for you is worth it all to avoid of what it would do dangerously and disruptively do to you and if not possibly destroy you and put you on a course where there's no coming back. Do you want to share anything on that? Sometimes those desires and wants completely overshadow your personal health and your personal well-being and it gets in the way and it's almost like a blanket or a tunnel vision where you need this you want this you need this and then in reality it would be detrimental to your mentality detrimental to your pride you know some things that almighty dollar talk sometimes, especially in this industry. And it can get you in a lot of trouble and put you in a lot of bad places. And 
like you said, sometimes a greater power or, you know, that little conscious speaks to you and says, hey, listen, take a step back, reevaluate this situation and breathe. I know you want to be successful. I know you want to be known. You want everybody to see you, but is this really the way you want to go about it? Is this really the way you want to do it? And it is, I think at probably, well, shoot, we can even take that past acting. I'm sure everybody in life has had that, whether it be with a job or, you know, shoot anything. My goodness, we could take this discussion and mold it into drugs, alcohol, you know, sex, anything. Yeah, that's a wild concept to grasp for sure. Yeah. Speaking of what it would the between what it would do for you to what it would do to you, did those thoughts go through your mind? Who were you? Who was Jacob in that moment when you went out for the circle? You went out for the mole. You got the part on the mole. You you were successful on the show. You even inspired. And you had people believing you were the mole. You had people believing that you were lying. And even one of the top managers in the business who you recently had the pleasure of speaking with, and I want to point this out, who has a full roster, was not planning on taking on any other actor or or performer or anyone else. And because of you, Jacob, he's looking to change that, potentially strongly bring you onto his roster because you're being you. With that, uh, once again, going back to what it would do for you compared to what it would do to you, what sort of revelation or epiphany did you have from that experience from beginning, middle to end in your experience in television and casting and understanding the difference of what it did for you to what it did to you? The roller coaster of emotions. Oh my God. So for me and to me, what that situation and that opportunity did for me and to me. So I did exactly what you were talking about a few moments ago. I went for it. I said, I need more exposure. I need more success. I need anything I can get. Beggars can't be choosers. I'm taking whatever I can get. And I didn't realize how stressful and intense and detrimental to your mentality reality TV is. If you talk to anybody who's been on a reality TV show, they will tell you, oh my God, if you're not mentally stable, it will destroy you. And I'm a firefighter paramedic. I deal with the worst of the worst. You know, I am trained in high stressful situations. I can handle anything that's thrown at me and I can stay calm, cool, and collected, which is why I took that with me to the mole. And people thought I was the mole because I didn't get worked up over anything. They're like, he's just breezing through this. He doesn't care inside. I'm screaming and freaking out, but you'll never see it on the outside. And so it was that concept of what it did to me. When you're in the middle of a reality TV show, a game, it is the only thing in life that matters. It's the only thing that you think about. It's the only thing that your mind is grasping 24 seven. You get so involved and invested in this freaking game that it destroys your world around you. You build this reality TV bubble and live in it. And then like, I don't want to give a spoiler to anybody who hasn't watched it yet, but when I, let's just say ended the game it was gut-wrenching. I had to take a step back and think, wow, there's a world outside of this game. How do I go back to living the real world? Oh my goodness. I don't even remember what the real world's like. And now I understand why they required us to see counselors, why they required us to uh, talk with people about the experience. Because when they told me that originally at the beginning, I was like, why in the hell would we need to talk to anybody? What are they going to do to us? This is ridiculous. I'm here... You know, I figured it was just because of, you know, a bunch of divas. Nobody can handle stressful situations. And then after I was done, I was like, oh, my goodness, that was a completely different type of stress and intense craziness than I'm used to. This takes a huge mental toll. And if you aren't mentally sound, it, it will destroy you. And afterwards, yes, that's what it did to me. 
but what it did for me almost outweighs what it did to me because here we are now, you know, I've gotten amazing experiences. I've gotten wonderful jobs, gigs across the world, you know, publicists, hopefully managers, things of that nature. More and more work has stemmed from this. I've got a worldwide presence. People know me, people talk to me, people constantly message me on social media. So it's, Yes, what it did to me was a little rough, but I'm very, very mentally sound and stable, and I was able to push through it. I would do it again if the opportunity presented itself because now I am more prepared. Again, back to preparation, ding, 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 one of the pillars I just hit on. Preparation is key, and now I will be more prepared. But it, it, it has helped me tremendously with this career to give me a push. So it's a little bit of all over the board there. You know, like I said, an emotional roller coaster. It did everything to me. <laughs> And I'm grateful that you touched on that. And when being prepared to add to that, Jacob, is make sure that you go into it knowing who you are and not creating or manufacturing something you're not. The moment you create and manufacture an idea to an I and creating an identity for something and someone else that you believe that they want. That's where that imposter syndrome comes into play. But also at the same time, you're disconnecting and creating a personality disorder. Be very careful because that's not talked about in casting as well. Personality Mm -hmm. disorders. And that's why they have that there because when you go through that, it is exhausting. It is exhilarating. And then you get back out into the world and you're like, well, I'm supposed to be a star. I'm on Netflix. I'm on NBC, The Voice. I'm on Naked and Afraid on Discovery Channel. I'm on all of these amazing shows and on these networks. Oh, you know, I just was on a, a Netflix show and it landed me a film. And then you've got, then you think to yourself, who am I going to be now? Because I'm identified by this show. And most importantly, what's not talked about before you cast is who are you going to be identified with? Who are the former castmates? Whether it's Big Brother, Survivor, Love Island, The Mole, whatever it may be. Who are the other people? Check out their Instagrams. Google them. Find out what's in the news. Because it's that guilt by association, you and your subject matter and your identity will be combined and compared and conjoined with those former people that were on those shows. And whatever those people did before you got onto that show is how the narrative and context is going to be played out in the media. And it's going to be compared. Just like when we think about what The Bachelor You know, each one's, you know, bachelor, bachelorette, each one is compared to the one before them in the alumni. Yeah. Once again, what is it going to do for you to what is it going to do to you? And be careful with those personality disorders in creating one because it is very difficult to come back from that. And it is so easy to lose yourself and lose who you are when you're in a game like that. And I hope other reality TV stars are listening to this because they're probably laughing, shaking their head going, yep, it sure is. And many, many, and I'm not saying that loosely, that I have counseled because I've, I've worked in mental health for 15 years. I've counseled as a, a publicist uh, post, if not at times pre, before they go into the show, go into this, is there is, that's where, once again, preparation, it's asking questions and I'm, I always ask questions before they, uh, you know, submit or enter and to figure out where they're going to go. Cause I'm going to tell you, I've had to drop clients uh, in the past to where who they were before they went into the television or film project, they were not the same person when they came out of it. And I had to let people go from representing some people Because something happened and I know what had happened. Either they created a false persona or identity 
and or that false perception and identity was always there. However, that opportunity or that experience exacerbated it and brought it to the fore and took it to another level to where it was like, oh, I was wondering if I saw that other side of Sam, but that Sam wasn't there because he was not in an environment to be that other personality or that other person. But because he ended up on that show, encourage that other personality of Sam, whether it's considered a false identity or otherwise, gave that part of Sam permission to come to live and to take control of the Sam that I knew before. And that is the reality of it. So once again, the five pillars are being prepared, be professional, show confidence, bring your personality, not a manufactured personality. And once again, being flexible. And being flexible is that directors and casting agents are often looking for actors who are versatile and can adapt to different roles. Don't try to figure out how you're going to adapt. Take your own life experience and ask yourself and find out, can you identify what they're asking for? Amazing race, naked and afraid, climbing the Alps. You know, what are they asking for? Don't try to fit into it. Figure out, can you do it? Because you know that that's who you are. And you have that capability and maybe it's a gift or a talent. Didn't mean to cut you off, Jacob. It's a gift or a talent. And now you can channel that. There are, there are gifts in, about you as a paramedic and as a, uh, a firefighter that you get this role. And this is something that I spoke to Michael about. I said, and, I, and I'm sharing this. I didn't share this with you before, but I don't mind sharing it now. I said, he reminds me of a Ben Affleck. He reminds me of a Liam ne Neeson. I said, you have to put him in certain roles or a certain position for Jacob to expand and to channel who he is and given him those opportunities. I said, you will find why he's referenced as a superhero. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to expand a little bit on the adapt, uh, adaptivity that you were discussing. We can even take that a little farther more than just in your acting aspect into production aspect because a lot of people think when you're the actor you're the star and that is the farthest thing from it you are the hired talent you were probably the last person that they organized the show or the scenes around when they hire you you have to be flexible because they will change the times, they will change the locations, your outfits, your everything. And you just have to be ready. You know, everybody else comes first and then the actors. Yes, you have to look good. You have to know your lines and you are the last piece of the puzzle that brings everything together. But that's just it. You are the last piece of the puzzle. So you have to be ready at the snap of a finger to adapt. Nine times out of ten, you don't know what you're wearing to set or what time until the night before. And that is very stressful. You're like, okay, did I shave at the right time? You know, is my skin tone, do I have the right amount of tan? You know, it's just those little details that add up and make it so you have to be adaptable and flexible. Yeah, and I call them, and thank you, I put a prayer, you know, I call them commentaries. Like when we think of the Real Housewives or moments when even in the mole and they're asking you guys questions and you're answering those questions. Um, once again, I call them commentaries. Uh, that's another thing that changes up the show. That's why they say and call it unscripted because you can have 13 producers on one show, if not more or less. And they will, I'll take Big Brother, for instance. Like they've got a lot of producers, a lot of producers on all hours on that show. And they can call you back anytime. You'll never know. You won't see it on film. It may not be on a show or you may not see it on a live. And they're going to ask you questions. And those questions are there to sort out exactly where are you in the game or in the show and even where you're at in yourself. And then to figure out the direction of where your relationships are going to be. So that is why they call it unscripted. 
is because it is not fully scripted. Yes, it's all scripted television, but there are areas in unscripted TV that are really manufactured. And as you had shared, Jacob, last minute, you just never, never know. Someone could end up leaving at the last minute. Someone could be having a mental breakdown or emotional breakdown, and they're having to take a break. It happens all the time. But yeah. once again, you can be prepared, but don't over manufacture yourself. Don't manufacture yourself in order to be prepared. Be professional at the same time. Don't try to be what you think that the casting director or producer wants you to be. Just be yourself, show up, you know, treat it as a business, dress your at your best, have the best lighting, be mindful of your environment. Be, uh, you know, I always say, Think of those commentaries on the shows. I always say like the real housewives have the best background, do your best to be in a great environment for great sound and great lighting, because that is what they're taking are those commentaries from your audition and they're putting it all together for the producers and the directors. The other thing, confidence, 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 believe in yourself and your abilities. Because if you're not, if you're not believing in yourself or your abilities, they will be manufactured for you. Bring your personality, allow the, the casting producers, directors, everyone else to sort out how they can expand from your greatness, not to manufacture your greatness. And then lastly, be flexible, have an open mind and just know that if you're selected and you're given the opportunity, you meet to a lot of criteria. Your personality is first and foremost the key. Most importantly, you could be picked because you meet to the goals and expectations of what the sponsors and advertisers are looking for. And then just go back and listen to this if there's anything else. Th these are all... <laughs> I'm sharing the basics, but I'm adding to the basics of what is not talked about because also casting, uh, producers, uh, you know, at the same time, they may or may not want you to know all the ins and outs about this business because they have a job to do. And sometimes I wonder if I haven't been given or been put on a show yet is because I know all these things. Well, that doesn't mean I shouldn't be cast. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> but I'm going to honestly say, Jacob, congratulations to you. Congratulations to have cast for uh, the circle, but also having both experiences of knowing what it's like to not land a show, but landing a show, uh, being in the news of people underestimating and thinking you're the mole and Referencing you as, as being someone that was fibberish and not forthcoming. And just like Michael had said, you, you were telling the truth. You were being you. You are being you. You are real. You were real on the show. And that's where the confusion came from is because you did not manufacture yourself. You are you. And people are so not accustomed to that because people are so used to most people and I'm not saying that loosely are used to smoke and mirrors and a manufactured mm -hmm. identity. And I'm going to tell you right now, you may be smart to get what you want from doing what you're doing, but there are smarter con artists out there because what you're doing is a con game. You're playing a con and you will get fucked. Mm -hmm. Absolutely one day, one way or another. And someone else more clever, more experienced and more cunning than you will be taking your spot. So put take the smug smile off of your face and don't think you know everything, even if you're sleeping your way through it. Mm -hmm. You don't hold all the cards. And that's one of the biggest things you discussed that I 100% agree with is just be yourself. That is the biggest thing I contribute to myself. My success is just being who I am. You know, 
there's always going to be someone better looking than you, someone who's got more skills and more credentials than you. But if you're an asshole or a cocky, arrogant actor, then people aren't going to want to work with you. People aren't going to want to cast you. You go in. That's why people enjoy working with me because I am who I am. I'm a people person. I can hold a conversation with anybody. It's what I do. It's what I enjoy. I love people. And so just being myself, having fun with people, going with the flow, it has brought me a lot of success and a lot of connections and a lot of people who enjoy working with me. And so if I can give any advice, that is the number one thing I would like to share with younger actors who are trying to get into the industry. Like you said earlier, you don't have to put on a fake facade. You don't have to try to feed, spoon feed the people what you think they want. If they like you, they like you. If you fit the role, they'll cast you. If not, on to the next one. You're probably going to have to do hundreds and probably get a couple. Yep. And like I said, I've been submitting to be on Big Brother since 2010. The woman I was talking about earlier and shared 19 times before she got onto a show. Uh, so, And I'm going to be honest, it was Michael who shared that advice with me about just keep going and keep going. And this is what most importantly, what he told me, Jacob, is that you need to be prepared. And if that means that I keep doing a little bit at a time every day, each day to strengthen myself and to refine myself, whether it's doing my radio shows or preparing other people's shows, being a producer, uh, you know, working in public relations, you know, advising and helping people, offering advice like this. You know, here's the other thing, uh, a point proven. Most people will go in and they're going to take the show. And like today, we had a, a little bit of a, a tech issue. Something was going on. Uh, the listeners weren't able to hear Jacob. We were using a new plugin that my team wanted me to start using. And come to find out, we were having a little bit of issues. I had to go back to the former format that I'm accustomed of using. And most people, if not, I would say everyone else, would go in and take that little blip out. I'm not. <laughs> we're going to process <laughs> this show. It's going to be available on all your favorite podcast channels, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Amazon Audible. Uh, you know, so and we will re-air this at a later date on Power 98.5. Uh, just know whether you're listening to us live now, you listen to this show later on down the road, you listen to it on Daily Motion, you listen to it on uh, any of your favorite podcast channels, this will be uploaded and submitted today. Uh, I'm not taking any of that out. This is what happens in radio. I, I, I don't, it, I'm not embarrassed. Maybe 20 years ago, since when I was a perfectionist, I would have been embarrassed and I would have made sure all of this was polished and everything was taken out. And I even had, I did put the, have the recording put on pause, but when you started singing and getting into it, Jacob, I'm like, no, we need to get this recorded. This is what happens. <laughs> and I believe people should know and have the experience that you, you always get a finished polished project. I enjoy things being polished in its true format. Yeah, it makes it more real. It makes people feel more connected with, you know, the host, the audience, all the above. All the above. And one last thing before we move on with our day, and thank you to everyone from here and all over the world for joining us uh, live on air with Stephen Cuoco with Mr. Jacob Hacker. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your love, your loyalty, your respect. Uh, we always look forward to having you here. Whether you're listening to us on the website or on the app, click the bottom messenger in the right-hand corner. You can always share it, uh, advice, share your love, give shout-outs. Kyle, big shout-out to you in Oakland uh, for tuning in live. I hope this information helps you now in the future. Uh, but more than less, I'm always here to answer any questions. You can go to stevencuoco.com, S-T-E-V-E-N-C-U-O-C-O.com. It doesn't matter what you do, who you are, what profession you're in. As long as you're coming to the table, you're who you are. Uh, we're both passionate about life and what's happening in it and what you're doing. 
uh, it's very easy. I'm always here to answer any questions. Uh, Power 98.5, you don't need a subscription unless you're going to listen to the station on Apple Music. Obviously, you're going to need a subscription for that. However, whether you uh, listen to it on Siri, Alexa, um, uh, what else? The iOS or Android app. We also stream live on Live FM Radio, uh, Radio Line, MyTuner, and many others. I believe it, we're now in over 200 countries now being on Apple Music. Uh, so before Apple Music 200, now Apple Music even more. Uh, all things Jacob Hacker. Instagram, Jacob.Eugene.Hacker. And your Twitter and TikTok, is it the same handle? Yep. Um, I believe, yeah, they are the same handle, but whether you find me on IMDB, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, link trees and all of them. So you can click link tree and hit anyone that you would like. Any closing thoughts, Jacob? Oh, well, much love to everybody who is getting into the industry and be patient. It's a challenge. There is no guarantee, no success. If you would have told me a year ago that this is where I would be at, I would have laughed in your face. I mean, it's all been a domino effect for me. Thank you so much for the fans and the public for listening. I really enjoy doing things like this. I really enjoy, you know, just having casual conversations and giving what little insight I can to try to help someone else. That's a huge proponent of mine that I really enjoy doing. Um, the acting and modeling is my biggest choice of career. And hopefully Stephen has me on again. We can share more into the life of the Australian firefighters calendar. That'll be a good topic as well. Yeah. Share with us that because I did offer that info in the intro. Give us something, something we can go home with to uh, look forward to and knowing about you what's coming out October of this year. Oh, okay. So the Australian firefighters calendar, I'm sure most of you know about it. If not, um, it is the largest firefighters calendar in the world they have been doing it for 30 years and all of the proceeds go to charity we just shot the 31st year of the australian firefighters calendar they are sold worldwide and this year they said we're bringing over americans so i was one of the two first americans to come over to australia and partake in such a wonderful organization a wonderful experience and it took a lot of preparation to get to that point but i'm very honored that i was able to showcase the work that i put in showcase being a firefighter all for a good cause so later this year in october we start to unveil uh the calendars that they have produced for 2024 and we will know much more and show a lot more at the end of the year and i'm looking forward i know david the owner of the calendar is looking to have a very strong media tour here in the States. Uh, so more information will definitely have an offer on the show. Jacob, definitely, you know, you're coming back. I mean, you are TV, <laughs> you are, you're everything, you know, you're Superman, you know, just like in the LA note, you know, you are a superhero. Come on now. Hey, that's the goal. <laughs> I would love to be able to portray a superhero. You want to know what's funny is talking about roles and auditions and things like that i have been turned down for three acting firefighter roles let what? every actor who's listening think about that i am a professional firefighter and paramedic for almost 10 years and i've been turned down for three different firefighter roles that just shows you how every casting has a specific necessity and I don't know. It could be along the same lines that you were talking about, Stephen, how you know too much about the industry and they don't want someone like you in that role. Maybe they don't want someone who is so, well, okay, now that makes me sound egotistical. Someone who knows a lot about the fire industry because they want to mold them and put them into the role that they want to fit. It could be something along those lines. It could be because I don't fit the look that they're going for. But either way, those are the things that you have to be prepared for. Another pillar to talk about. <laughs> And I'm glad you said that and hit the box of nails through the board with one hammer swing, Jacob, because what I shared <laughs> earlier, I was, or I'm not was, it's not past tense, like you, I am the perfect person to have obtained that opportunity that I was convincing myself that I would be perfect for and my life and lifestyle would be perfect for and how it would benefit me. I didn't get it. And that is, that hit hard. 
I, I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to lie. That hit hard. I'm thinking to myself and I got to a point and I was, you know, not being judgmental, but I'm just going to go on to facts like you. I was thinking to myself, then I'm being told this is what they want. This is the box of criteria, stipulations, and standards that they wanted. I was overqualified for everything. And I know for a fact and try to prove me wrong. I love saying that just for the fuck of it because I want to know that I know that this company and this opportunity had no one and will not have anyone like me because I am only one Stephen Cuoco with what I know and what I have that could have done better than me. And I know for a fact, like you, most definitely no speculation involved would have enhanced not only the company, but the project. And yep. I'm thinking to myself, well, okay, they must have wanted Mary Poppins because, you know, it's, I mean, what do you want? She's more just a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. And you're like, take this damn medicine before I yeah. shove it down your throat. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's like, it's like it, yeah, a spoonful of sugar, but it's like, okay, uh, bend over, bitch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not that person, okay? I'm not going to play that. And nope. and if there's a way that they know that you're going to be that, that's dangerous. So remember, the five standard pillars for casting, be prepared, but as Jake and I shared, you can be prepared, over-prepared, and over-qualified qualified enough. It doesn't mean anything. Just show up and 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 have some, and the fifth, the fifth what I'm going to add, some flexibility, be flexible, ask questions, be interested to know who's interviewing you and don't hesitate to ask questions. Because I believe if you're showing, not if, when you're showing interest, it better prepares you. Want to know who's interviewing, want to know about the project, want to know more information. And there are casting directors and, and producers that will want to share some information to get you prepared. I, I mean, if, if you are... Uh, a person who's going to a location you never been to or a country you never been to, are you just going to show up and just land and say, Hey, here I am. Or are you going to do some research and ask some questions and want to get some more insight? So once again, be prepared, be flexible, but also don't manufacture yourself because you will create a false identity. Um, and then you will have problems with that. Um, uh, with that situation of, um, and I said it earlier, what was it, Jacob? Um, uh, it, that, the whole smoke of mirrors, you don't want to deal with a disconnected personality at all. Oh, or, um, yeah, you don't want to be a fake. Exactly. Persona. Bring your personality. Remember, you are more than enough and you should be hired and respected and uh, brought onto the pot project because of what you've accomplished. And it goes back to what Michael said, do something every single day, just like what Jacob and I are doing. We're not standing, sitting idle. We're not waiting for someone else to tell us action or when we're worthy. We're here we're on the show. We're talking, we're sharing advice uh, to help you and to help make your life better and to utilize our set skills to uh, share it forward is what I like to say. Showing confidence, but most, most importantly, Re-listen to this over and over again. Take some notes down. We shared a lot that most people will not tell you. And uh, maybe some things that most people don't want to tell you because for whatever reason, but they're not secrets. There's nothing that Jacob and I shared today that is uh, something you won't find on like a WikiLeaks. I'm not saying it's on there, but you know where I'm going with this. You know, <laughs> it, it's, it, it's there, but why be encrypted? Just be honest. Um, and everyone should just be honest. Uh, uh, imposter syndrome, that's what it was. That's what I was thinking about. Anything else, Jacob, before we head out today? The only thing I want to say is one of the biggest detrimental things any actor can do in the industry is compare yourself to someone else. Never compare yourself to another actor. Never be upset when someone takes your role. The only person you need to compete with is yourself. There will always be someone better. There will always be someone worse. 
do not get down on yourself when someone else steps in and takes your place, whether it be in an initial casting or later down the road. It can drive any actor insane. So the only person you're trying to compete against is yourself. Make yourself better, do better, be better, and the roles will come. I agree. And I'm looking forward to one day sharing my own success story of when when I'm in land a role. Because uh, even Michael, I told him, I said, uh, I told him how perfect you would be on a Tyler Perry show or a Tyler Perry film or whatever. I, he was uh, sharing with me uh, something about um, casting. And I said, listen, I don't know what's happening right now, but I'm here. I don't need to be part of your roster. If if you if you want, keep the money. I just want the experience. I want to get out there. I mean, he started laughing. Absolutely. <laughs> he said, "Oh, you mean to tell me? Um, yeah, we'll just go ahead and not have this person show up, and we'll put you in place." I said, "Yes." I said, yeah. "If it's going to be a problem, I don't care." <laughs> you know, then sure. You, you've got to make sure that you're protecting yourself and having due diligence by making sure that someone shows up. So I'll show up for whoever is not available to show up or I'll show up because I know I am worth showing up for, for this part, because this part was made for me. And if it wasn't made for me, then I will make sure it's made for me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again, Jacob. We're going to definitely have you on again. You did exceptionally well for your first hosting of a live radio show. How do you feel? Uh, I feel like I was made for it. Like, uh, I'm just itching for more now. Maybe next I'll uh, do a sports cast. Who knows? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> and I've said that before. I even said I've sold, yes, told that have. to many people. CNN, UFC, you know, E! News. Yeah, you're you're definitely radio and television ready. I mean, look at the promo photo for crying out loud. You look like a news anchor. Yeah. Heck yeah. I'm in. All right. I know. Okay. We both are. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you for everyone for joining us today. Live on air with Stephen Quoco on Power 98.5 with my guest host, Jacob Hacker. All things Jacob Hacker. Head on over to jacob.eugene.hacker. His Instagram is awesome. You're going to love it. Uh, he's also on Facebook, TikTok, Twitter. Google him. He's worth Googling. He's also the star of season one of The Mole. Quite interesting. Many different comments, reviews, and articles on that. However, people misunderstood Jacob and assumed. And when you watch the show or when they watch the show, boy, did they have to jump up in the air and kick themselves in the ass with both feet. Huh. Don't assume. Uh, once again, live on air with Stephen Cuoco is available on all your favorite podcast platforms. It's going to be available today. Share the love. iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Amazon Audible, and Spotify. Uh, stay tuned for that. Head on to any of those, whatever you're on. Type in a search bar, live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Follow, subscribe, all the above. Uh, stay tuned for more information that we will have in upcoming shows. Also, Anything Resilient You with Alicia Pazzoni. She's on Saturdays. What an awesome interview she had with actor Steve Gutenberg from Police Academy. Remember that 1980 show? He offered a lot of great advice. We just re-aired that show. I definitely want that to be on again. You can always find out what's happening on Power 98.5, whether it be the iOS or Android app or the website. We do have a schedule there. It will let you know of all the shows that are upcoming and ones that are going to be live as well. Uh, all things Stephen Cuoco, public relations media, head on over to my public relations website, Stephen Cuoco, C-U-O-C-O dot com. And that's Stephen with a V. All things Power 98.5, Power 985.com. Uh, you're going to see a lot of New content from this season of NBC The Voice, season 23. Looking forward to having some guests on the show uh, who are this season's to contestants. And uh, if you have any other questions and loving what you heard today from Jacob and myself, reach out to Jake, reach out to me. 
Uh, but these are all the golden point or points of casting known and what is not talked about and known to help make it easy for you. And this is coming from Jacob who is in the industry. He's a seasoned actor. He's already been on Netflix on one of the most top rated shows. I've been in the industry for over 30 years. I've been uh, doing casting for uh, at least five. I've been diligently putting myself out there for the last three years. Uh, consistently, I've been casting for Big Brother since 2010. Uh, so don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, all things Stephen Cuoco, S T E V E N C U O C O, LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. Uh, reach out, connect. Love you guys. Thank you for joining us today. Happy Mother's Day weekend. Give your mom a hug. Friend us on your socials and let's connect.